Hello, Kamatuklas! Welcome back sa isa na namang pagtuklas ng aralin sa mathematics. This time, we will be working with statistical terminologies. And these are some of the important terminologies that are commonly used in the study of statistics. So let us learn that in this video presentation. The first term that we are about to study is population. Ano nga ba tong population? A population is a large group of objects, people, places, or things. And to illustrate population, consider this. A researcher is interested in determining the average grade of grade 12 students at Hanosa National High School which has 350 students. Since we are talking of the population, 100% of the student will be part of the research. So, yung 350 students na binabanggit dito sa ating situation ay magiging bahagi ng research. Ibig sabihin, grade 12 students Compromise the population which is usually denoted by capital letter when we talk of a statistics. Hence, N or the population is equal to 350. Dahil alam na natin ang population, the next term is just part of a population. And that is what we call sample. So what is this sample? A sample is a small portion or part of a larger population. It can also be defined as subset, subgroup, or representative of population. For instance, in the example given a while ago when we discussed the population, the researchers wanted to work on with the average grade of grade 12 student, but this time, let us consider na ito naman yung ating pag-uusapan with respect to the researcher. The researcher intends to conduct the study with only 100 grade 12 students out of total population of 350. So kung mapapansin natin, iba na to dun sa population kasi kumuha ka na lamang ng part of the population. Hindi na yung 350 ang magiging bahagi ng gagamitin ng researcher kundi kukuha ka na lamang ng 100 grade 12 student. And that is what we call sample. And that sample is denoted ng small letter N. Kung sa population, it is capital letter N. Sa sample, it is small letter N. Hence, the sample is equal to 1 100. After learning about population and sample, we must also consider parameter and statistic which are related to population and sample. Let us begin with a parameter. A parameter is any numerical or nominal population characteristic. It is a population derived value. So, pag sinabi natin parameter, it describe the whole population. So, consider this in a parameter. Everyone was surveyed. Kanina, a researcher is interested in determining the average grade of grade 12 students at Tanosa National High School, which has 350 students. It's the same situation given nang diniscuss natin yung population. Because in a parameter, everyone was needed to survey. No one will be left behind. So, lahat din ng mga estudyante. See our example. So, you need to ask everyone in the grade 12. So, you ask all grade 12 students with respect to their average grade. 
So the average grade of 350 grade 12 students is a parameter. Kasi lahat ay tinanong natin. Okay, the next term is statistic without letter S. So let's begin. A statistic is a parameter estimated. It refers to any value or measurement derived from a sample. So parang kanina, ang sample is just part of the population. This time, yung statistic naman, parang related din sa parameter. But it is just an estimated parameter. Let us consider that we will use from your class to guess the average grade. This time, if that's the case, maybe you have created a statistic. Consider this. The researcher intends to conduct the study in determining the average grade of only 100 grade 12 students out of a total population of 350. Since we have mentioned that when we talk of a statistic, you are just getting the average grade from what you know already. Because you just base the answer on the average grade of the classmate or the students you already known. So you are just guessing. But you are not certain that your guess is correct. So that is what we call a statistic. So in that case, the average grade of 100 grade 12 student is statistic. The next term is data. Data are facts or sets of information or observations that are being studied. At pag pinag-uusapan ang data, data are gathered by the researcher from a population or from a sample. So kanina, yun na yung pinag-uusapan natin that the researcher is getting the average of the student Hence, ang researcher ay kumukuha na ng mga data either in a population or in a sample. So, when we talk of data, there are two categories. And that is qualitative data and quantitative data. And let us try to know one at a time. Unahin natin ang qualitative data. A qualitative data are those that can take on values that represent the concepts of attributes. This data type is non-numerical in nature. And at the same time, it is categorical data because qualitative data in statistics is also known as categorical data. Data that can be arranged categorically based on the attributes and properties of a certain thing or of, of a phenomenon. Data can be grouped according to categories like this. The color of cakes in a bake shop. We will not be talking of the number of cakes, but the color of cakes is what we are talking about. We are talking of the qualitative data, and that is categorical also. Another one, the athlete's nationality in the Olympic Games. Again, we will not be talking of the number of the athletes, but we will be talking of the athlete's nationality. And, that's, and that is qualitative data. The gender of the SK chairman who were elected. Again, it's categorical. Then the hair color of the male and female models. So we are not talking of a numbers or the numbers with that for a specific data. And that is what we call a qualitative data. On the other hand, Quantitative data are data which are numerical in nature. This data type is numerical in nature. So, ibig sabihin, kung kanina we will not consider a number, kung sa qualitative we never consider a number because we just work on with the category, this time around we will be talking of a number. Another thing describes numeric variables. So, any quantifiable information that can be used for mathematics calculation and statistics analysis is considered quantitative data. For example, the basketball player's height. So we're talking of the height of the players and that's 
quantitative data. The boxer's body weight, since we are talking of the weight of the boxer, so that's again a quantitative data because the data is numerical in nature. Then the test result of some Pagina students in grade 7. Again, that's numerical data. The ages of teachers in Binangonan district. That's quantitative. Again, lahat ng nakita nating example, ang sagot ay numerical data. Hence, that is a quantitative data. Another term that we need to understand when we talk of e statistics is Variable. A variable is a characteristic or property of a population or sample that distinguishes each number from the other. For instance, we have this a researcher is interested in working on a study of 350 students in grade 12 at Tanusa National High School. Alin ba yung mga possible variable when the researcher will conduct this? So, binigay lang yung number ng student. So, Consider, kunyari, ang gusto natin hanapin ay gender of the 350 student. That's the variable. So, gender is an example of variable. Then, height of 350 student. Again, height is considered variable. Then, weight is also considered as variable. But when we talk of variable, mayroon tayong four types of variable that we need to consider. So, let's start one at a time. The first one is a discrete variable. A discrete variable is one that has limited or finite number of possible uh, values. Discrete data is the data that is countable. So, ibig sabihin, pwedeng bilangin. So, you just count it. Ha? Discrete data can be broken down into smaller units. It is typically counted in whole number and there is nothing like half a value. It cannot be measured. So, ibig sabihin, countable talaga kapag pinag-uusapan ng discrete. Halimbawa, the number of students enrolled in a class. So, a while ago, binanggit natin na when we talk of discrete, it is nothing like a half value. So, hindi pwedeng uh, three student and a half. So, kailangan exacto yung magiging sagot natin or countable. Then, the next one is the number of days in a calendar year. That's countable. The quantity of balloons at a birthday party. That's countable. Hence, that is what we call a discrete data. On the other hand, as opposed to discrete data, which can be measured, yun naman yung tinatawag na continuous. A continuous variable is one that can take on infinite values within a given range. So, continuous data can be placed on a measurement scale. So, pinag-uusapan na dito yung measurement scale. Kaya nga sabi, measuring is used to obtain the values of a continuous variable such that the height of student in a class. That can be measured. So, kailangan natin yung measure. Hence, that is continuous variable. The length of the plant's leaf. So that can be measured. The temperature in Baguio City on a daily basis. And that can be measured. So if it is measurable, then that is what we call the con a continuous or continuous variable. On the other hand, let us try to know this also. A defendant variable. So, kapag pinag-usapan natin ang dependent variable, isasabay na rin natin ang independent variable. A dependent variable is one that is influenced or affected by another variable. So, ito yon, Ito yung pinabanggit sa definition. And same as an independent variable is one that influences or affects the dependent variable. At ito din yung binabanggit naman sa definition ng independent. Kaya magkaduktong sila kapag dinidiscuss. And consider this. The effects of localized and contextualized video materials on the student performance in mathematics. So, consider na ito yung ikakandak na research. If this is the case, maybe. So, ang tatawagin nating independent variable ay itong localized and contextualized video materials. Kasi, ang performance ng estudyante ay pwedeng maapektuhan 
ng localize and contextualize video materials. Dahil ang pwedeng maapektuhan ay ang student performance. So, ibig sabihin ng student performance in mathematics, yan naman yung tinatawag na dependent variable. Kasi nga, napadepende sa localized and contextualized video materials ang performance ng estudyante. Kaya, yun ang tinatawag na defendant variables. And that's all, Kamata Class. Sana natuto tayo ng iba't ibang terms that we use in the study of statistics. God bless us.